I took the podcast on the road to the first robotics competition. This incredible organization brings together a vibrant community of kids ages 4 to 18, fostering their passion for science and technology through team-based robotics programming. Stay tuned as I talk with Greg Johnson and Mark Mesco from Walt Disney Imagineering on this episode of Forging the Future. Right, we're here with another episode of Forging the Future, and we're at the first robotics championships with Greg Johnson and Mark Mesco, two of the Imagineers at Walt Disney Imagineering. Thanks for coming on the show today. Sure thing. Excited to be here. I was surprised to learn, actually, that Disney has had a 30-year history of being involved with FIRST, and the very first FIRST robotics competition was, was held at Epcot, right? So that's it's really right. been something that started from the beginning, right? So. That's right. Um, as you said, we do have a long history with FIRST, and mm. um, we've been involved from every level, from organizing some of the games, some of the events, to mentoring teams, to, um, to being here and sponsoring with our, our time and, and uh, funding for some of the teams to be able to be here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the fun things for me being involved in projects for Disney is being behind the scenes, right? And you guys get to be behind the scenes. You are making the magic happen, right? So what does Walt Disney Imagineering do exactly? What do you guys do in your roles, like Greg, for example? So Walt Disney Imagineering is the, the creative engine of Walt Disney Parks and Resorts. We're responsible for designing, constructing, commissioning, and turning over uh, the theme park attractions, our resorts, the cruise ships, and so we drive all those awesome experiences that take the stories that our guests are so familiar with and make them real and tangible in our parks and resorts all around the world. Mm. I saw some really cool robotic devices that you have in your booth, some full standing. Was it, who was the, the, the character that you have in the middle there? So we have our, our new all electric A1000 audio animatronic oh, on display at the booth. Mm -hmm. It's super exciting for us because we, we typically don't, you know, folks don't get a chance to see behind the curtain that much, but mm -hmm. for the students here at, at, at first, we're, we're excited to, to give them a peek of the tech that goes behind it. Um, and so that case, uh, we, we love to have all of those out on display for the students to see the, the science and technology and engineering that goes behind the attractions and the stories that they're used to seeing at our parks. It's pretty amazing to see all the servos and electronics and all the ways that everything is put together. And I think for the kids to see an example, a real world example of something similar to what they're doing here at first, right? Yeah, um, and just just to talk about that for a second, there, it's everybody wants to see all the servo motors and everything, all the actuators that we have, mm -hmm. but um, but they're also interested in the stories we tell, mm -hmm. and we are using robots to tell stories and. These are Disney's future storytellers here today, mm -hmm. and so it's it's fun to see them thinking about things differently than just competing or completing a task with their robots, but actually thinking about how we tell stories with our robots. That's yeah, what, something Disney's very well known for, right? Story storytelling. Yeah, they ask us. Uh, we've got a lot of questions from the students about our process and mm -hmm. how do, how does it all start? I mean, they 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 see the finished attractions, and. We, we, we tell them it, it starts with a story first. It starts with our creative team coming up with blue sky ideas of, of what we think would make a great experience in the parks. And then our, our technical teams get involved with the creative teams and find out how to take those, those ideas, whether they be a, a, a character or a ride experience, and how do we make that a real tangible thing. Mm -hmm. And that's where our engineering and technical teams marry up with our creative teams to, to tell those stories in our parks. And um, what about these kids that are coming to the booth? What, are the, what kind of questions are they asking or what kind of experiences are they having? Or for you? I think one of the, the interesting things is a lot of them, they'll, they'll come and look at, say, our, our big audio animatronic figure. And it, at first, they're a little daunted by it, right? It's this, this very, very complex thing. And when they start talking with us, you know, we, we tell them that we approach that animatronic just like they approach their robot in the competition. It's a mm. team of people that it takes to make that a, a real thing different disciplines, different specialties, and all those teams have to work together under similar constraints that we do. We've got schedules we've got to follow, they've got t deadlines they have to meet. Um, and so we walk them through the process that there's no one person that, that made that thing. It's a team of, in our case, Imagineers that work together to make all of these things a reality. And there's just such direct parallels with how they complete their, their projects for FIRST. So there's a lot of uh, similarities between how FIRST organizes their teams and how an actual team would work in the Imag Imagineering group? A absolutely, and mm -hmm. it's, it's so impressive to me to watch kids that are at this age 
thinking about their project from beginning to end, planning it, designing it, self-organizing with mm -hmm. certain leaders that are rising to the top who never knew they were going to be leaders. And we've heard stories of kids saying that. Someone saying, I think I'm a really good leader and mm -hmm. I never knew that. And it, just to see their faces light up. But, but taking, I mean, it's an accelerated version of, of a Walt Disney Imagineering project that they have here. They've got a scope that they have to achieve. They've got to plan it out, they organize it, they build it, they test it. They'll have failures that they have to overcome, which is where we learn the most. And it's very, very similar to a classic four-year project at Walt Disney Imagineering. Is there a pathway from like first into Imagineering? I mean, how does Disney work with first? Absolutely, and, and that's why we're here. We're making those connections. We're not recruiting. That's too young to, to come and do real engineering work right. for us. But, but it's, uh, we're making those connections. We're, we stay in um, contact. I have probably over 2,000 contacts in LinkedIn. Uh, many of whom over the years uh, came from first and they've stayed in touch with me and told me where their careers have taken them. Some are actually working for us mm -hmm. now. And so, but yeah, the students want to know that. They, they're asking at a young age, maybe they're in 10th grade or something like that, what's the path to Imagineering? And the very first thing I tell, ask them is, what are you passionate about? You have to follow your passion. Don't target a company or a certain salary range or anything like that because work is hard. And so you want to love what you're doing, follow your passion, and hopefully it leads you to a place that you ultimately want to build your career. Yeah, I think that's great. And Disney actually sponsors a number of the teams here, right? And some 12 or more teams were sponsored, and a couple of them made it <clears throat> from California yeah. and also from Florida, yeah, right? That's correct. We sponsored, I think, uh, 12 teams this year mm -hmm. um, across Florida and California. We try and pick local teams that need help um, to get here financially or, or more importantly, with mentorship. Mm -hmm. And so we have our, our engineers who mentor teams and, um, and without our help, some of them just couldn't have gotten here. And um, you can talk a little bit more about what that means to be a mentor. Yeah, we have, we have a number of our Imagineers that are here this week and they're, they're splitting their time between our, our booth at the Innovation Fair and talking about Imagineering. And then they're zipping back down to the pits to, to work with the teams that they're mentoring to, to, to give them guidance and what on their, uh, on their robots before they go into competition. Um, a member of our team is actually one of the MCs right behind us right now. He's, he's, he's calling matches downstairs. So um, the Imagineering team just, just loves getting involved, um, not only, not only you know, at our booths sharing about what Imagineering does, but also getting hands-on uh, down with the event with the students and helping them with their, with their uh, projects. Well, that's a big part of it, right, is the mentorship. And um, from what I've heard, Disney's been involved from the very early days, even in some of the more famous teams. Um, I've heard about Exploding Bacon and some of the <laughs> others out there. Right. And then the teams that have made it here are at the championship. So, yep. right? And you have four teams that are yep. competing now for that championship prize. And I think that um, it's very important to give the children and the kids and um, role models. And that's where the mentorship comes from, right? They think they're building a robot, but they're actually getting a lot of experience in team collaboration, mentorship, and actually inspiration for what they could do with their own careers or That's their right. education, right? So, mm. I was just gonna say, um, regarding the mentorship, it's um, when we are recruiting new mentors within Imagineering, mm. um, oftentimes our engineers will say, you know, how much do I help? How much do I do? And, and really we, we have to teach our mentors to ask the right questions of the kids, get them mm -hmm. thinking and solving the problems themselves. We're not telling mm -hmm. them the best way to build their circuit board or, or to you know, mechanical advantage on a lever or anything like that. We're at asking the questions of them to get them to be thinking about engineering in the right way and mm -hmm. the right process and how to troubleshoot. Not, we're not doing it for them and that's, yeah. that's critical is, is sparking that uh, engineering mindset. We can only hope that we're inspiring the kids, you know, a fraction as much as they've inspired our team at the booth. We're coming up and asking questions. It's, it's, it's so invigorating to, to be here with the energy and all of the excitement. And we, we've gone on the student-led tours around through the pits and the different competitions. And it's, it's just such an infusion of energy for the excitement that's here. And we had a, a, a father come up with his two sons to the booth and was sharing with us that, you know, as they were growing up, that the, the kids were always excited about, about our parks, about our attractions and the stories we tell. And there's, there's been this transition in the past few years where now they're looking at it from a different angle of there's, there's potentially like a career in this, this, yeah. this type yeah. of technology. And he, he was just so emotional explaining how he, his kids are now excited about Disney for a whole different reason, for a, for a whole science and technology and engineering reason. Um, and that, that's just so exciting to hear because we are too. We, we, we love it for the story. We love it for the, the technical challenges behind it. And so to hear that there's uh, others that are getting inspired in that same way is just 
so so good to know. I think it's similar to like a behind the scenes track on a movie, right? You watch the movie for the entertainment, then you watch it again to hear like how do they actually make it. And I imagine going on a ride and as an engineer, uh, like how do they do that, right? You yeah. know, is a different different perspective for those kids. Um, yeah, sure. So yeah. tell me a little bit more about the the kids coming to the booth and the parents that you've been talking yeah. with. Talking well, to. it's number one. It's fascinating the, the the way the kids are thinking and the the detailed questions they're asking about our rides or our our animated figures. But I had this one educator come with a couple of her students. She's a principal of a school, and she showed wanted to show me a video on her phone, and it was from an eighth grader. She teaches nine through twelve. An eighth grader sent this to the principal of the school. An animated figure animatronic figure they made in their garage and in, it was in their bedroom right next to their little twin bed is this in full um, costume a figure that's moving and dancing to music and there's lights going it's an eighth grader put this together and sent it to the principal of their high school they're going to be going to soon and saying they can't wait to be involved in in first robotics and this this educator was phenomenal she's thinking she reminds me of the way Dean Kamen was speaking 30 years ago mm -hmm. about the future and changing how we teach kids and this. And she's trying to change it in her school and she's looking for big companies to help um, propagate that. And it was just it's just heartwarming. And really, it gives you, with all the craziness going on in the world, it gives you faith and confidence in the future and the, when you see these kids. Well, I think that's one thing that Dean was trying to change, right, is just getting kids interested in STEM and engineering and giving them that platform and the ability to get involved and seeing and be inspired, right? And f see how they could actually tell these stories. Uh, how, how do you coach kids, for example, to be better storytellers? Is that part of the mentorship program? Uh, or do you try to get mentors to, to teach that yeah. aspect of like building a robot? Or I mean, there's not so much here, but I mean, uh, at, and it's very important at Disney, right? Yeah, it, it gives us an opportunity to talk a little bit about our process mm -hmm. where, where you know, if, 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 if we're doing our jobs right, the, the technology is in support of telling a good story. Mm -hmm. And it really comes down to when, when we collaborate at our best, things just become seamless and you're just able to be immersed into the story. And it, it, it goes back to the, the teamwork side of it to make it that seamless. Um, it, and so, again, that's the parallels back to the teams. They too have these different disciplines that, that have to come together and work together to create a seamless end, end product. In our case, it's to tell a story. We use the technology to tell a story. We don't, as we're dreaming up a new attraction, we don't sit around the table and go, hey, you know, what would be some really cool tech we could use on this next one? Um, we work with our creative teams to come up with what is an incredible story that we want to tell? What's an incredible experience we want to make available to our guests? And then we start to fill in the blanks with what is the tech that we're going to use to do that? And if we've done our jobs right, that all becomes invisible in the background. And, and it, it becomes the most, the closest thing to magic that we can get is if we can make the tech just disappear into the stories that we're doing. Mm, and, interesting. Yeah, I think on the topic of mentoring, one, I, I read an article once that said <clears throat> some of the best teachers, one of the things that they found was that they actually paused some, some small amount, like two seconds longer when they're waiting for the answer to a question, yeah. right? You know, yeah. So when you're talking about guiding students to come up to the right answer themselves or ask a multiplication problem or an you know, addition problem, but just waiting for them instead of telling them before they, so they wait for the marble to drop, right? And get on to exactly. the right places, so. Um, no, that's um, exactly right, is giving them the right prompts and then just mm. watch the gears start turning. Mm -hmm. And we've had like little small interactions in the booth. Like obviously our mentors with teams are doing this throughout the whole season, but even the little interactions in the booth, they'll walk up to the animated figure and ask a question about like, how does this work? And instead of just directly replying with it, it, it turns into a conversation of asking them yeah. questions. Well, well, take a look at this. What do you think this is used for? And just kind of get the gears turning and, and more of a conversation versus just, uh, yeah, 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 here, here's the answer. Cause that, that seems to generate the more long-term effect of is how do, how do you think about it more so than just, oh yeah, this is, this is what it does. Mm -hmm. I think you're probably with me, Greg. I wish I got involved with FIRST when I, I wish FIRST was around when oh, I was a kid. We all say that. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, uh, I think it's a fantastic program and uh, I'm sure uh, Dean and team is really uh, appreciates Disney support uh, and everything that you guys do. Uh, anything next for you guys at WDI that you want, as far as FIRST is concerned? or? Um, Oh, um, we're hoping to continue our support. Mm -hmm. um, we have people lining up that want to be mentors, engineers that want to be mentors, and, mm -hmm. and so we hope to continue on in the, in the way we have in the past. So basically, it's been 30 years, and 
a never-ending story on that side, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm trying to make up for lost time. I wish I was involved earlier, but, <laughs> but you know, came to the championship just a few years ago for the first time and just... Uh, Are you mentoring yet, Greg? That, that is my goal next year. So okay. I, I, I've, I've been getting into it the last few years, and it was just having a conversation with one of our mentors of like, mm. how how soon is too soon to try to start uh, <laughs> talking to teams yeah. for next year? Yeah, but well, these I'm sure these, I'll see you there. these students are all of our futures, mm. right? And so it behooves all of us to invest in that, and that's mm. that's what we're doing. Well, thanks for everything you guys are doing. Absolutely, thank, thank you so much.